Are you ready to break free of the life that feels wrong, inauthentic, and doesn't suit you? Have you always imagined moving forward, but just didn't know how to make it happen? Stay right where you are because Elizabeth Moore, the soul and body healer, is here to show you how to raise your bar. Hi, welcome to my first solo show. I'm excited and nervous again. It's my first time on my own. And today we're talking about generational healing and basically what patterns can you find that are playing out in your family line? How can working through your generational healing actually change your life for the better? And if you've ever felt that your life isn't yours and that you're playing out family members' stories, this show is for you. I'm excited to be here. I have been a generational healer through Ohana Generational Healing for about four years. And it has been my life's mission, I think, to actually heal my own generational healing and my own generational trauma. And my act- my journey on this path actually started with my dad. He uh, used to always say, and I know he said it to himself, but he was saying it to all of us, um, actually be better than your parents. And for him, that didn't mean, you know, having like a five bedroom house because they had a three bedroom. It actually meant putting more into your life and being a better person. And for me, that was just the absolute beginning of this journey. And I am so thrilled to have life coaching as one of my tools to have Ohana generational healing as one of my tools, um, color therapy readings as one of my tools. There are so many wonderful things that you can do to actually heal your generational trauma. So before we start, we should actually talk about what is generational healing and what is generational trauma. And the one thing I really love about the Ohana is that we go through a questionnaire before we start a session and we talk about the traumas that your family's been through and the ones that pop out, the ones that just kind of sit there until something happens and then they, they come out and change your life. So generational healing in its simplest forms is actually choosing to end the cycle of abuse, choosing to end the cycle that isn't working for anybody anymore. So it doesn't always have to be abuse. That's typically where our minds go the first time, right? We want to end the abuse. And the thing is, is that there are so many other traumas that actually show up in our lives and show up in our family's life that need to be worked on, but don't always Glamour is not the right word, but they're not glamorous. They're just the humdrum everyday things. So in actually looking at your, the patterns in your family, you can see which ones need to be healed. And that's what we're doing. (laughs) So I deeply believe and know that in making a conscious choice to heal and to end it, you're actually ending it. And I know saying a conscious choice is very easy, but in the whole scheme of things, it's actually a lot harder. And that's why when you're looking at doing this, you really want to have plans for when the days go bad, for when things happen, for when life jumps out at you and you don't know how to react so that you're not reacting in the same way. So what are some of the things that this is involved in? Making a plan for one, making a plan involves how am I going to react when things hit the fan? How am I going to react that's not the same as other past family members? How am I going to take care of myself? And how am I going to take care of the people in my life? And those are quite simply a lot of the hardest things to do. Once you realize what the trauma is, once you realize how you can change it and how you can change what you're doing, then you have a plan and then you can start moving forward. Um, Feeling a little nervous, I apologize. Um, So when you're making your plan, you really need to include the systems that you can put into play. Systems are people in your life that you can turn to. Therapy, right? Therapists are amazing and you can absolutely turn to them when you need them. So you need to have your team to support you. 
So talk to other family members, make this a group effort, right? I think some of the best healing that I have seen in myself and clients are when they involve the family and when they get together and they actually talk about what changes they would like to see moving forward. You know, you need to have that support system in place to help you do this. It's absolutely amazing when you have the support system, how fast you can progress, but also when you have those days and you're going to have those days, everybody does, you have the people that you can actually call on a moment's notice and they understand and they support you and they're holding space for you. It's very important to have that. So, oh, what does holding space mean? Sorry. Um, holding space for me is just that you're not judging. You're not giving suggestions when they don't really want suggestions. You are there for them. You're listening and you're saying, I see you and I love you. That's holding space to me. It's what I do when I hold space for other people. You're listening, you're seeing them, and you're giving them love and support and encouragement. Because when you're the cycle breaker and you're making the changes, it's a very hard thing to do. And you are a very strong, courageous person to do it. Okay, so the other part of your plan needs to be self-care and however that looks for you. I know we hear a lot of self-care and taking care of yourself is having bubble baths and um, putting your feet on the earth. And honestly, those are fantastic things to do and they do help. But self-care is actually understanding your needs and understanding where you are right now and what you need to do for it. Self-care is being mindful of where you are and how you're responding. And part of being mindful in this process is knowing why you're responding the way you're responding, right? Everybody's going to approach trauma in a different way, and they're going to feel the feelings in a different way. So knowing why you're feeling what you're feeling right now, or even just what you're feeling right now is so important because you need to be able to name what you're feeling and name what's going on in this moment. So that leads us into keeping a journal, which is also a huge part of self-care in the generational trauma healing. Why? Because document is everything. Writing down what you feel and how it affects you is very important. You have that as a guide to go back to, and you have it as a pathway forward. Okay, this happened at, let's say, family Christmas. Somebody said this, and I felt that. Now you have a path to look down. Now you have someplace to go when you're looking at what am I healing? in this family, right? And I, I think I said this already, but I'm going to say it again, because doing the questionnaire and finding the patterns in the family is so, so important. You can't heal what you don't know is broken and you can't heal what you don't know needs to be healed. So keeping track of it and writing it down and having it be a group effort again is incredibly important. And it's such a wonderful part. Sorry, it's read so true. It is. You need to know what's going on. And having that group effort, having the people to turn to and support you is so huge. So what other things can you do that you can do for yourself for self-care? Gardening. It's appropriate time of year for gardening. <laughs> Um, you're making your space beautiful and joyous and lovely so that you can actually um, enjoy moments. 
and give yourself something to take your mind off of what's going on. Sorry, I just got a question. Where is the questionnaire? It's actually a questionnaire that is in the beginning of every Ohana generational session that I do. Um, it's a three page questionnaire. It takes about half an hour to 45 minutes to fill it out. And every time I do a new session, we actually do a whole new questionnaire. And we'll get to that in a little bit, why it's important to do a new questionnaire every time. Sorry. So walking, um, that is not only great for your body to actually get out and get moving with your, with walking, but it's also great for your mind and it helps to actually calm you down and relax you. You're not constantly running the thinking thoughts. They're actually able to make some sense. So you're walking for self-care. Uh, massage, love a massage, any kind of energy healing. So I really like having Reiki sessions. Um, when things are up in the air and everything is just kind of coming at you at once, I highly recommend a Reiki session. It is just, it helps you to let go of what's not yours to carry. And especially when you're working with family trauma and generational healing, you don't know what's going to come up. And there's a lot of things that you're carrying that you really don't need to carry. There is um, just one simple story that just, it explains it so well. So scientists were doing an experiment on mice and they shocked a female mouse. And at the same time, they released the scent of mint. And I don't know how many times they did this more than once when she got pregnant they didn't do it. And her entire first litter all came out. And when they smelled the scent of mint, they had the same physical reaction that the mom did at actually getting shocked. This went down seven generations. So for seven generations, every baby mouse that she had reacted the same way to the smell of mint as if their body had been electrically shocked. For me, that is just huge because it, it, it just shows you how much trauma we're carrying for past generations that isn't ours to carry anymore. And how much our families impacted by past generations and what they've gone through. And how many times do you react not knowing why you react to the way to whatever happened? Sorry. Okay. I'm just, I love this one. You don't know why you're reacting the way you're reacting because you've watched generations actually react in the exact same way. And you're doing it unconsciously. You're not even aware that you're doing it until you are aware. And then it's time to stop. And that's what we're here for today, to learn how to stop the cycle of abuse by supporting yourself and making it easy on you, because this is really heavy, hard things to do. Some of the topics that come up on our questionnaire and in the sessions are very, very heavy and scary and hard to deal with. So it's really important to actually have that support system in place um, before you start doing the healing. And as you're doing the healing, start building it even bigger because the more that you do, the more comes up, the more you're ready to release, which is fantastic and wonderful and freeing. And <laughs> it's just eye opening how much you can actually carry that's not yours to carry. So, when we come back from break, we are going to talk a bit about my witch hunt <laughs> and how it actually led to generational healing that I needed to do for my future generations and for my family on both sides, actually, it was, it's incredible how much you can do and how much you find out after you start doing the healing work, things just come to you. And that's incredible. So um, I believe we're going to break soon. 
maybe. <laughs> but in my self-care plan, I had to include a lot of other people. And it's really, really important to do that, to build that up for you. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. So often we live our lives based on the expectations of others. My dad always used the mantra, be better than your parents. Let's break the patterns that are keeping you unhappy, playing small and repeating the stories of your family. Sometimes we're afraid to make the changes and choices that our hearts yearn for. We just aren't sure what choices will create the life we want. It's time to begin raising your bar and living your best life. Elizabeth Moore, soul and body healer, invites you to challenge yourself to start raising your bar and changing your life. Elizabeth is live Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 Central, 12 Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Raising Your Bar with Elizabeth Moore. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to elizabeth.purpledoor at gmail.com. Now back to the program. Hi, welcome back. You're listening to Raising Your Bar with myself, Elizabeth Moore on Inspired Choices Network. And today we're talking about generational healing. And I'm just about to share a little bit more of my story on my witch hunt and how about, I'd say a year and a half ago, I actually found out that there was a witch hunt on both sides of my ancestors and not even that long ago. So when I think back on mine, um, it started out innocently enough. There was just a couple people that really um, didn't agree with some choices that had to be made. And for whatever reason, I became the focus of their hate. And then it just kind of snowballed. And I say that there's a lot of stuff that happened. I'm just kind of glossing over it. But in the whole scheme of things, I received death threats. I was told to leave the community. I was told that I was um, the bad apple in the group. And if I left, everything would get better. I was told that I didn't fit in. I was an outsider of the community. I uh, didn't have the community's um, morals in my system. <laughs> And I think shockingly, uh, because I was running big group events um, for everybody, um, there was that whole thing of I was bringing in uh, unknown outsiders to the community, and I was putting everybody at risk. And those were just some of the tame comments. I won't go into the really awful ones. It did uh, completely destroy my life as it was, as I had planned it out and <laughs> was living it. It was shocking. It was horrifying. And it was completely life-changing. And for me, um, I can say now with hindsight, it actually changed my life for the better. The Elizabeth who went through that experience probably wouldn't have agreed with me at the time. It was that intense. So um, about a year and a half ago, I was talking with some family members and, you know, we talk about stories and the stories that we were talking about were ones that I'd never heard before. And on one side of my family, um, there was a family member who witnessed something that 
he didn't know at the time was what he was seeing. He uh, was then involved in an investigation uh, into murder. It was a murder investigation. And because he was a witness, uh, he was harassed by certain members of the community. Um, he received death threats uh, for him and his family. And in the mail, in the mail, because we didn't have the internet back then, right? Um, <laughs> I'm laughing and, you know, it was serious to the people who went through it. But he received death threats in the mail. His family received death threats. Um, it was really at the time shocking and horrible. Um, and he felt guilt for his entire life because he chose to protect his family, which again, right choice every time. Um, so that was the one side. And, you know, we were talking about the family members who lived through it. They were much younger at the time and how they remembered it being and how their life did a complete 180 change too. And it was just oh, unbelievable to me that not only did I experience something like that, so did my ancestors. And then I was talking to other side of the family, um, probably about mm, six to eight months ago. And they went through almost the same thing. They didn't actually receive death threats in the mail. They were verbal. And basically it was the other part of my story where we went from being in the community to not being welcome in the community. And in this case, it was religious differences. They moved into um, a neighborhood, I guess you could call it at the time. And their religion was different than every single person in the neighborhood. And they were not welcome. And it was made very obvious all the time, every time. Uh, they were harassed. They were blamed for things that went on, you know. And I, th that's why I think the witch hunt persecution story actually fits. Because we look back on those stories and, oh, my crops failed. It's the local witch's fault, right? Those were very similar stories to what was being told about them. And I really, truly believe that we all have these stories, the persecution stories in our family lines. Mine just played out in like two generations really close to each other. And it was one of the things that just, you know, I always say it was the year uh, 2015, 2016. How could this possibly happen in today's day time? I'm sure my ancestors said the same thing. How can this possibly happen? So when I did the generational healing for this actual story, and it was several, several sessions, this isn't a quick fix, right? You are putting a lot of work and effort into it. It was with that whole thing of I'm healing for my ancestors who didn't have the chance to do this. I'm healing for me who went through this and I'm healing for my children. So they never have to go through this. And I think that is as a cycle breaker, that is my why so that my children don't ever experience this or anything like this. And so that further down the family line, should there be one, it doesn't get repeated again. It doesn't get another person in our family hurt like this. So for me, again, my life did change and it changed for the better. Um, but for my ancestors, life changed, but it didn't necessarily change for the better for them. Right. Um, back then we didn't really move neighborhoods or cities the way we move now. Right. It just wasn't <clears throat> excuse me, wasn't done. It wasn't something that was normal. You were in a village or a town 
And that was where you lived. That was where you had your families. That's where you died most of the time. So moving wasn't an option for one of my ancestors. My other ancestor did end up moving and it followed them. It didn't ever really um, leave their family, unfortunately. So I really feel like with me doing the healing and healing back the family line, because we can do that with Ohana generational healing, that is something that's so important in that we're healing the whole story. We're healing that whole trauma so that hopefully it doesn't happen again, right? And it just struck me as so odd that it happened on both sides of my family and not that long ago. And it was kind of good outcome, bad outcome, right? There was no in between for them. And with generational trauma, sometimes there's no in between, right? And you just need to be aware of it so that you can move forward from it. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to join the chat room and ask away. I am um, very excited about the Ohana Generational Healing Sessions. And you can ask, book your sessions with me through either my website, www.purpledoor-cambridge.ca, or you can email me at elizabeth.purpledoor at gmail.com. I love doing Ohana generational sessions for this very reason. I do not feel that we need to live under the dark clouds that our ancestors went through. We can choose to make life different for us and our future generations. And Ohana generational healing is just one of the tools that we can use. What is another tool? <laughs> well, what started my whole um, learning about this story journey was actually making a family tree. And we started, I have um, one cousin who did our family tree on one side, all the way back to the 1500s, which is amazing. And looking through it, the amount of work and dedication he put into it is phenomenal. But you can actually start your own family tree with a simple tree drawing, right? That's what started mine. <laughs> I was doodling one day. Um, one of my aunts actually made this beautiful embroidery cross stitch family tree. And looking at it, I just started doodling and following the branches back, right? Siblings, um, aunts and uncles, cousins, all of those things. We also did an ancestry one, and ancestry doesn't really have the cousins, it's the mom to dad, mom and dad one. You work back from that. Um, we started that actually after we found out about the two stories and how wildly and weirdly they actually played out in my life and my kids' lives. And so I always say, start with a family tree, ask questions. Um, usually, I want to say usually, every Ohana generational session is completely different. But usually once the intention is there and you actually start looking backwards for the stories, you will be surprised at how many people start just volunteering stories to you. It's absolutely phenomenal and crazy and wonderful, but it does happen. Um, my own, that was totally unexpected. I had no idea that just starting to heal that would bring out the stories. I have several clients who um, didn't even tell anybody that they actually started doing generational healing to get rid of the trauma. And they actually had people drop boxes off at their house full of papers from their grandparents or their aunts and uncles or, you know, and journals, journals about what they went through and all of the trauma they went through. It's synchronicity right when you start that whole path and decide to be the cycle breaker things happen and thing good things happen which is so fantastic so uh what else right journaling again different journal different book 
write it down. Um, I do have a client who actually, um, every session we do, it's for a different family member, which is fantastic and beautiful because she's building her family tree as we're going to sessions. And every time she comes in, it's for a different ancestor. I found out, you know, my great, great grandmother's heartbreaking story, and I want to heal it for her. And that's how we do that. And it's absolutely fantastic. And I think we are actually ready to go for another break. So we are going to break. You are listening to Raising Your Bar with myself, Elizabeth Moore, on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back. So often we live our lives based on the expectations of others. My dad always used the mantra, be better than your parents. Let's break the patterns that are keeping you unhappy, playing small and repeating the stories of your family. Sometimes we're afraid to make the changes and choices that our hearts yearn for. We just aren't sure what choices will create the life we want. It's time to begin raising your bar and living your best life. Elizabeth Moore, soul and body healer, invites you to challenge yourself to start raising your bar and changing your life. Elizabeth is live Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 Central, 12 Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Raising Your Bar with Elizabeth Moore. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to elizabeth.purpledoor at gmail.com. Now back to the program. There, sorry. Welcome back to Raising Your Bar with me, Elizabeth Moore. You're listening <laughs> on Inspired Choices Network. Sorry, I'm just reading the comments. Um, and they're actually talking about past lives and diving into past lives and how that's actually playing out with generational trauma. And it's true. We have a lot in our life, in our past lives, and in our generations that actually needs to be healed. So we were talking about family trees. And quite honestly, I 100% believe in making a family tree. I have uh, several different ones. I have a couple of notebooks. And I have like pages dedicated to now, my family. Um, so my dad was one of nine, my grandfather on my dad's side. So his dad was one of 22, 23. Like there's a lot of people in my family on both sides and it's fascinating and phenomenal. And there are so many stories that you just don't know about. Right. So I have a couple notebooks, obviously <laughs> one for each side of the family. Right. And then when you're delving back into it, you actually, I have like notebooks on, you know, one family. So it just has all of the births, all of the deaths that I know of and that my family knows of, um, all of their marriages and their kids, because a lot of times we tend to forget how many people are actually part of our family and what their stories are. So a lot of, um, a lot of my work recently with Ohana Generational Healing and my clients have been um, in the area of addictions. And to me, it's just heartbreaking, right? Because there's just so much. And there's so many stories that seem to repeat where we, I'm getting off topic, but we're going to go down this road. Um, we tell stories about our family members, right? 
well, the oldest is the most successful. The youngest is, you know, unfortunate or the middle child's always ignored. You know, we have these stories and even of kids, right? Oh boy, have you seen him? He's the crazy one, right? We have these things that get said constantly when family gets together and get repeated as if it's like family lore and family um, reality. And the fact is, is that it's stories that have been told about family members. So when I'm doing my notebooks and I've got, you know, the family and typically depending on um, how much I know about them, I will fill it out, leave space because you'll always learn more. But also I include the stories that we tell because they're very important. Not that they should def define you or determine your life outcome, but because somewhere in the past, there's a reason for that pattern coming out right now. And unfortunately, with a lot of addiction, we see it repeated over and over again down the line. And, you know, that was, um, it's in my family as well. And that was one of the coping skills, sad and unfortunate coping skills um, that was used by one of my family members who went through a similar witch hunt, you know, um, to live with what happened and the outcome of what happened. And it is unfortunate, but it's one of those things that I keep in mind when, you know, I talk to my kids or I talk to myself so that I am aware of this. It's an, it's a possibility, right? So in learning all of that and being able to write down the stories, write down the traumas, write down the outcome of it, right? You know, um, so on the one side, the witch hunt that couldn't move and that ended up having to stay there, you can see how it played out in all of the family members and down the line, actually. And for me, it was very helpful because... I went back and I did a lot of forgiveness work um, on my own behalf and for who they were when they went through it and who I was when we all went through it. Because I firmly believe, um, knowing that the ancestors who went through this have passed over, that they're with me. And they were with me when I went through this. And quite honestly, I think they were my strength that got me through it. It's like, I got through it every day. I woke up with a little bit of hope in my heart and I don't know how it got there. I'm thanking them for it. When I do my forgiveness work for seeing that I needed them and for being there for me. So when you're doing generational healing, it's really, really important to do the forgiveness work on yourself and do great gratitude work with your ancestors because they know what you're going through and they might have been there, right? If you're breaking cycles and not like massive necessarily like the witch hunt, like I really truly hope that nobody in this lifetime or future lifetimes actually goes through that again because it messes with you in so many ways and it is life altering. So I really hope that nobody else has to go through that. Definitely not alone, right? But I truly believe our ancestors walk with us through this life. And when you are doing this work, they're proud of you. And they've got their hands on your shoulders, thanking you and guiding you and helping you through it, which we all need that support, right? Life is a team sport. It's not for the singular person to get through. So, um, sorry. When you're doing your family tree, the other one that I have is actually, um, I, you can't see my hands, but they're wide. I have a huge, huge piece of paper. You know, the ones you get from like the dollar store. We used to do our school projects on them for science fair. Can't remember the name of it for the life of me. Um, but I have a family tree on that one. And each time something needs to get added, each time something new comes up, every time we have a new birth, I put it on that tree. 
and it's definitely beaten up right now, <laughs> but it is my reference guide. It's my reference point. And it just, it gives you that why, right? If you need a why beyond feeling it, having that validates what you're doing and validates the choices you're making because 100% being a cycle breaker, you know, sometimes I think a lot of us feel like we were just born into the family to be that person like that. That's our mission is to break the cycles and be better for the next generation. But I also believe it's a conscious choice. You can choose at any time to not be better. Um, it's hard, I think, <laughs> quite honestly, but it's, it's a conscious choice to do that. So sometimes when things are hard and life throws life at you, you need to look at that family tree so that you can see how many people you're helping, past, present, you know, alive or dead, you're helping them in their story and oops, they're supporting you in yours which is fantastic. So forgiveness work for me has been huge in generational healing and generational trauma. When we start blaming people and blaming even ancestors, we're actually not healing the problem. We're not curing the issue. We are caught in the web of the story and we're actually making it murkier and dirtier and muckier. And it makes it harder for us to get out of it. And then all of a sudden, everything in our life is about that person and the choice they made or didn't make. And instead of actually understanding that we're all human, we all make mistakes and we all make stupid decisions and choices. And we also all make great choices and great decisions. And we need to work with our ancestors and ourselves in order to break the cycle and break the trauma. So again, if you want to work with me, if you have any questions about Ohana generational healing, or even life coaching, in order to break some cycles in your family, you can reach me at elizabeth.purpledoor at gmail.com. Or you can reach me through www.purpledoor-cambridge.ca. Uh, there is information on the website about Ohana Generational Healing, Magnified Healing, and also Color Therapy Readings, which are fun and um, a lot easier than you think they would be They're to actually participate in. I enjoy them. They're fabulous. And they bring out the things that we're not really aware of on our mind at the time when we're picking the colors. Sorry. So forgiveness and the Ohana generational healing journey is huge. Acknowledging that your ancestors were human, acknowledging that your ancestors made mistakes, acknowledging that you're human and acknowledging that you've made mistakes. Breaking the cycle means that we are seeing everybody as humans but we're also not judging. We're not blaming. We're not, you know, um, pointing the fingers. We are accepting that life happens and that's okay. So part of cycle breaking is seeing all the patterns for what they are. And we don't always necessarily want to see the patterns, but a lot of times they just come at us and you can't not see them. And that is important to actually write down and journal and have that in your family tree. Um, I know I keep going back to the family tree. It's part of the questionnaire. Um, we go through all of the different things that your family's gone through. And I can't tell you the amount of times I've done the questionnaire with clients. And I'll ask, has anybody in your family been whatever? Uh, what murdered, abused, stolen from, and the answer is usually no. And then five questions later, they're like, well, yeah, but there was that one time where uh, our best friend or their best friend stole the family business right out from under them. And they answer the question without even actually 
realizing that they answered the question because again, when we don't know what we're ready to let go and release from the past, we don't know, but there's a lot of things that we don't need to carry on into our future. So uh, we are going into the third break and you are on Inspired Choices Network with Elizabeth Moore listening to Raise Your Bar. I am looking forward to continuing in, oh, the last actual 15 minutes of the show. Um, I will see you after the break. Thank you. So often we live our lives based on the expectations of others. My dad always used the mantra, be better than your parents. Let's break the patterns that are keeping you unhappy, playing small and repeating the stories of your family. Sometimes we're afraid to make the changes and choices that our hearts yearn for. We just aren't sure what choices will create the life we want. It's time to begin raising your bar and living your best life. Elizabeth Moore, soul and body healer, invites you to challenge yourself to start raising your bar and changing your life. Elizabeth is live Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 Central, 12 Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Raising Your Bar with Elizabeth Moore. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to elizabeth.purpledoor at gmail.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back to Raising Your Bar with Elizabeth Moore on Inspired Choices Network. I'm excited to be talking to you about generational healing. Um, and so far we've talked about wounds and trauma and forgiving, which is huge. And now I want to turn it over to actually being grateful for all of the strength and knowledge and wisdom and courage that your ancestors showed in their life. Because as much as we are carrying all of the trauma um, and abuse that they went through, we're actually also carrying all of the joy they lived, all of the wisdom that they learned, you know, we don't actually think about that as part of this whole journey into healing your trauma. They went through a lot and they got through it. They survived it, you know, for the most part. Um, but we don't actually talk about the good things that we got from them, right? The strength, um, the ability to cook for some of us, the family recipes that got passed down. I know um, part of what I love the most about everything that we inherit from our ancestors is the handwritten notes in them. And I know from my story, uh, it's mostly cookbooks, <laughs> the handwritten notes of who liked what and what tasted good, what they would never cook again. Um, for me, those are ways to connect with the women in my family, because again, in my family, it was mostly the women that were cooks. Uh, we're breaking that cycle now, but in the past, it has been mostly the women and you will find treasure troves in the cookbooks that they wrote in, in the notes I have on one side of my family, there are uh, quite a few people that actually daily journal about life, what's going on, what the weather was like. Uh, some people actually go so far as to put the temperatures, but the amount of information that we have found out just through those daily journals alone. And I'm not talking like it's five lines on the notebook page. It is not, you know, pages and pages detailing everything that happened, but, you know, I have uh, one ancestor and what she wrote about was what food they ate, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and what they worked on in the garden or outside on the house. And it's just wonderful. It's so lovely to connect with them that way and to have those stories and that knowledge. You know, um, the one in a journal, it, she was talking about... Um, a baby who uh, passed away after birth. And it was just so 
incredible and lovely and wonderful to see that, you know, not the only person to experience that in your family. And I am grateful for the strength that they had to get through that. I'm grateful for the rituals they used to help them through that. So I really think that, you know, while we're talking about healing trauma so that we can let it go and we're not carrying it or repeating the stories, we also really need to talk about the joy that they bring us. You know, they made it through. They gained wisdom, strength, and they have that to share with us. So I invite you, while you're thinking about the traumas, to actually open up a separate page and write out all of the good things. You know, they were self-sufficient. My family on both sides uh, were farmers and other occupations as well. But it amazes me how incredible they were. You know, I mean... They all had to gather their own firewood and store it for the winter. They had to face adversity of not having the electricity that we rely on today to heat their homes and light their houses. And I think that we really need to look at how strong they were on a daily basis and how they could find joy in the little things in life, you know? And again, for me, it's going back to the cookbooks and seeing what they cooked for celebrations. What did they cook on Sunday nights? What did they get through with during the week? How did they add joy and fun to their life when it didn't feel fun and joyful, right? And, you know, that part of the witch hunt for me was really important in the fact that I had to find ways to add joy and fun to my life because it wasn't just me that was going through it. It was my three children as well. And how could I add fun and joy to their lives? We did a lot of outside activities. Uh, we cooked a lot of different foods. Um, some of them were from cookbooks that were from my family and others were just random recipes that we found and thought, why not? Some of them didn't work. Some of them did. But, you know, we got into gardening in a big way as a family at that point. And it just brought us together as a family and made us stronger. And I found that actually talking about what we were going through and, you know, it made us stronger. It made it more easy to talk about. So everybody was able to share what was going on for them and what their experiences were. And I know in the first show with Christine, I said that I was really hesitant to share my story because I felt that there were so many other people involved in my story, which is true. And the thing is, my part of the story doesn't change. And I have every right and I need to get it out there so that if this happens for future generations, they have that to fall back on. They can look back and go, okay. So she healed us to this point, and now we need to heal forward. So hmm, I just got it next week. Uh, next week, we are talking about, um, are you living or are you coping? And it's big picture thinking versus little picture thinking and how to make the choices that change you from the small picture to the big picture so that you can add joy and fun to your life while you're going through whatever is happening with life right now. Um, sorry, I'm counting down my minutes. <laughs> I can be reached at elizabeth.purpledoor at gmail.com if you have any questions or www.purpledoor-cambridge.ca for my website to book appointments and look into Ohana Generational Healing if you're interested. I really enjoyed today's show and I hope you did as well. If you have any questions, please reach out and let me know. I am excited about next week and <laughs> I am really excited for next week and actually sharing all of the different ways that you can go from coping with life to living life. 
Thank you for listening to the Raising Your Bar Show with Elizabeth Moore. Elizabeth returns Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 Central, 12 Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until next time, remember to continue raising your bar.